an emergency. The tree's branch fell on a motorcyclist and trapped this person underneath. It's a tree. The whole tree fell? It's a whole tree. It fell on her. People are pulling her out. Help me. Help me. I can't breathe. We honestly thought the person passed away. How are you still alive? I don't know. I guess God had other plans for me, which I'm still having troubles dealing with. Metal, padding, and wheels. A world controlled by a joystick, strapped to a motorized wheelchair. Strings here to pull it closed when I come out. <laughs> unable to live on her own. This is the life Jane Neely's having trouble dealing with. I am starting to get over it, I guess you might say, but not really. I uh, have to be here in this chair the rest of my life. In August of 2020, Jane was driving home from her part-time job at the Julian Pie Company in Santa Isabel. The then 75-year-old was navigating the winding East County roads on her Harley motorcycle when just half a mile from her house, a 6,500-pound tree branch snapped at the exact moment she rode underneath. A branch the weight of a Ford F-150 smashed her into the pavement. I just woke up three weeks later like, I didn't really know what was going on. Jane's body was crushed from head to toe. Pieces of the tires and brake lights still mixed in with the gravel on the ground. How reliant on other people are you now? Totally. While her frustration is directed at the life she now has, Jane's outrage is at the California Department of Transportation and the missed opportunities to protect her and everyone else driving that stretch of roadway. When I realized what I had lost, uh, that's when I really got angry, and I guess I still am, because life that I wanted is no longer available to me. This aerial video captured by a forensic accident reconstruction team shows the exact location of the 75 foot oak tree. It's in what's known as Caltrans right of way. It's the responsibility of that state agency to inspect and ensure the tree and the roadway are safe. Anyone who knew what they were doing and knew what they were looking for should have identified A, this area and B, this particular tree and done something about it. Brett Schreiber is Jane's attorney. He says a branch of the tree split from the original trunk. Over the years, it grew to 38 feet long, directly over the road, and became extremely heavy. All they had to do, because you could see this, just driving down the road, was send a crew out there and do some basic weight reduction on the side that was overhanging. Caltrans is required to do an annual tree inspection, looking for situations that are dangerous to the public. That's from a maintenance directive going back more than a decade. Schreiber said that in 2018 on Highway 79, records show there was no annual inspection. He says in 2019, the agency appears to have copied the inspection from 2017. They literally cut and pasted the same inspection from the prior year into 2019 just to simply say that they did it, to check the box. These are the inspection documents side by side. They violated the public trust. Jane sued Caltrans. Schreiber says 10 days before her civil trial, Caltrans admitted they were responsible. A jury awarded more than $16 million. But it's what was uncovered during the case that gave a glimpse into a system most people don't know existed. There's a team that handles Caltrans tree maintenance for San Diego County. In a court deposition obtained by ABC 10 News, a former maintenance supervisor testified that in the East County, a team of only six to eight people was responsible for a geographical area covering hundreds of miles. At one point in the deposition, the supervisor said Caltrans tried to establish another tree crew but it was rejected. Did you feel that you were sufficiently staffed so that you could complete the work in a reasonable and, and timely manner, generally speaking? Generally speaking, sir, no. 
Caltrans refused multiple requests for an on-camera interview. Instead, they sent over this short statement saying they're saddened by the events of Jane's case. They're looking into the processes by which maintenance is reported and handled. But trees falling and injuring or killing people and allegations of dangerous roadways stretch beyond San Diego County. California is aware of this danger and for some reason they have not done enough. Tim Loringer is an attorney in Los Angeles. Right now, he has three cases against Caltrans involving trees. One of those, the Sepulveda family. They're suing Caltrans and the Department of Parks and Recreation for wrongful death and dangerous condition of public property. According to their lawsuit, in May of last year, Ruben Sepulveda was heading north on Highway 101 near Redcrest in Northern California when this tree fell across the road. Loringer says Ruben hit the tree was hit by another car and died several weeks later. How many more people have to be involved in accidents like this before something really serious is done? This is a hospital bed with an air mattress on it. While Jane survived, her independence ceased to exist. How much time do you spend generally in this room? I saw really half the day, 12 hours. When she struggles to get out of bed, take a shower. These are all my supplies or just move throughout life. Catheter, that's what I use. Sometimes she questions whether living was the best outcome. I'm getting stressed out because I'm getting angry. On August 19th, 2020, Jane Neely started the day a Harley riding granny. She ended it a paraplegic. Don't let somebody else have that happen to them. It's not easy being in a wheelchair.